So you wanna see a live demonstration on how to hook up your Kemper using the four cable method with a multi-effects pedal unit, which I'm sure many of you do have. All right, stay tuned. Hey, how you doing? This is Tony from Six String Corner, and today I'm going to show you a little bit on my setup, which I use the four cable method, connecting my Fractal FX8 to my Kemper Profiler. So this video is mostly for those of you who have the multi-effects units that you are running in with your Kemper Profiler. Um, that's what I have here today. If you have a, a setup where you have a lot of individual pedals, your setup may be different. It probably will be different, uh, where you're gonna set up certain groups to go through the uh, effects loop, certain groups gonna go straight into the input of the amp. So that will be a different type of setup than what I have here. If you still wanna continue to watch, you might get some ideas on um, Hopefully it might help you still. So the reason I went with the Fractal uh, effects unit and not just went with the Kemper is because I, well to be honest with you, I felt that the Fractal effects were much better. Not that the Kempers are bad. If you just have the Kemper, you got some pretty darn good effects in there. Uh, I know that the reverbs are really kick butt and I do use those reverbs a lot, but mostly maybe like 95% of the time, 98% of the time, I'm using the Fractal uh, for my effects. They're a little easier to set up and they have a lot more variety and give me a little more flexibility. Uh, I do play in a Rush tribute band and I also do a lot of work for contemporary um, church, which you know, those guys in those types of bands like using reverbs and delays and whatnot. And so I really need something that was a little bit more exceptional. Um, and those of you who do have multi-effects units, you probably know what I'm talking about, whether you have a Line 6 or you have a Boss or you have, you know, whatever, you're probably using it for the same reason. At least that's what I'm guessing. So anyway, I'm going to show you how to hook that all up and let's get started. Oh, by the way, for those of you who are struggling with the chord transitions and you're trying to move your fingers around from chord to chord or even from note to note, um, I have a freebie down there called Chronic Chord Condition. And I have four techniques down there that you can use to help you navigate those fingers from one chord to the next so you can arrive on the chord right on the beat when you're supposed to. So I know a lot of you do struggle with that. I know I teach a lot of people that struggle with that. So click on the link below. It's called the Crown and Chord Condition. And all right, let's get on with the video. Okay, this is my pedal board setup. Okay, as you can see, I got the Fractal FX Mark II. I have two foot controllers and I have the uh, Shure wireless unit. I love this pedal. It also serves as a tuner. Um, but this here, uh, these two controllers, I have one, this one here connects to this one. So whatever I want controlled on the uh, Fractal FX Mark II, I will use this pedal. This one here connects to the Kemper and I'll show you that in a minute. This is for effects that I like on the Kemper that I want to control here. Uh, primarily, uh, in, at least in my case, the Wawa, I like the Kemper's Wawa more than the Fractal. So I tend to use this for the Kemper. So I use this sometimes. Uh, there will be certain songs where I mean to control, you know, how much gain I have going within a song. Uh, you may want that also to change the delay if you're using the Kemper. So I'll use that sometimes for this. This one here on the Fractal, I'd say 95% of the time I'm using it as a volume control. Uh, and of course in the volume, you can put it anywhere in the chain uh, on the fractal unit. I tend to keep it in one place, but you know, it gives me some options. That's primarily this is used for the volume control. I really haven't used it for anything else yet on the fractal, but I do use that volume control a lot. All right, here's the back of my fractal unit. Now, of course, your pedal board may look a little bit different, um, so you'll have to adjust as necessary. Uh, here's the big one though that I highly, highly recommend um, is please color code or have some way of marking your cables. You know, if something goes wrong in the middle of a gig, uh, you're trying to diagnose something, right away you can know, you know, what chord um, serves what part of the Kemper in a flash rather than tracing things out. Okay, so that, that's something that I would highly, highly recommend that you do something of this nature. I like the color coding method because it's easy to see at a gig. Um, so anyway, let's take it from left to right. This one here actually is not color coded because it goes directly to my, um, uh, to my uh, um, Shure unit. Uh, these are a little different colors. These are for something else that has nothing to do with this uh, video here. But um, rest assured that this one comes straight from the, um, the, uh, the input here. So this, this could be your guitar cable if you don't have a wireless unit. Or if it is your wireless unit, this is coming straight from the guitar, which they call in on the pre side. Okay. Now on the outside here, I have, it says to the amp input. And so the left mono, okay, I have this marked red. 
or it's a, well, it's a dark kind of red. And so this one here connects to, it goes right to the Kemper input. As you can see, there's my red tape coming off a little bit there, but anyway, that's what I use. And then uh, I plug that straight into the input on my uh, Kemper. Now on the send, uh, from the Kemper, this one here is from the amp send, okay? So in my case, it would be the Kemper send. You're going to run this into uh, the send part of the effects unit. And of course, we all, most of our effects boards should have something similar to this where it's the send. So this one here, I have marked green. All right, I use the left since uh, that's basically the mono side. And um, I run that to the direct output send right here. Okay, so that's what I run here. As you can see, there's my green. It's just a regular guitar cable that I run into here. All right, now for these next two here, this is the output on the post. So this right here is uh, running in stereo, left, right, as you can see. So you, you may or may not want to use this. Uh, I like to use it in case I have a stereo setup. Some gigs, of course, don't have that, but there are the rare occasional gigs where we're using some kind of stereo system which sounds freaking awesome. Basically all I did here is the left is an orange and I have the right as the yellow. Now Fractal uh, recommended to use these hum busters on this side of the unit. Um, I got them. I'll be honest with you, I don't really know if you actually need them. You can probably just use regular cables, but uh, I got them at the beginning to avoid hum. Okay, so you can use your own discretion on your own system, your own unit. But uh, that's the type of cables I used here. So as I said, the orange is on the left and the yellow is on the right. Okay, now this is going to go over to my Kemper and let's show you where that's connecting to. All right, here's those hum busters again and uh, cables. And the orange is using going to the return input and the uh, the yellow, which connected, which was on the right of my um, fractal, is called alternative input. Kemper says, you know, recommends this is how you connect these two if you're running a stereo type of system. Now, if I wasn't, I would take this one out and over on the other side too, that yellow cable would just be disconnected and you can probably just run this one here on the return input and you'd probably be fine. But um, I'm, since I'm using uh, the stereo outs on the uh, fractal, that's how I've got it connected to the back of the Kemper. One other thing that you're gonna to wanna to be sure that you have set up properly and it's gonna depend on your multi-effects unit. Uh, this is what my uh, fractal FX edit looks like. However, yours will look different. I know the line six is definitely look different than these. Um, you may also have uh, be able to do it right on your floorboard, but uh, regardless of what it looks like, um, just make sure that you have your um, configuration, your routing uh, set up correctly. Um, I generally, since I have eight um, settings I could use here, I will generally use my first four to go before the amp. As you can see there in the bottom there, there's that A. And then um, I have um, on the right side, five, six, seven, eight are on through the effects loop. So, you know, you can adjust this as necessary and how you want to set up your effects. Uh, you may have more than this, you may have less than this, but regardless of how your software and or your, uh, your screen on your floorboard looks, just make sure that you have your routings set so that you can, uh, you know, make sure that your reverbs and delays or wherever you want to go through your effects loop are in the proper place. Uh, this is an important thing. I have missed this a couple times and actually have done gigs where I did not do that. <laughs> which, uh, you know, it made for some really interesting, uh, not so good sounds that I didn't want. So uh, just so, don't forget to always do this. Make sure that you have your routing uh, set uh, correctly, okay, on whatever floorboard that you're using. So this is one uh, that you definitely do not want to forget uh, when you're using the Kemper, and that is to make sure that you have the effects loop uh, activated on the Kemper. If you don't do this, no matter how you set up, it's not going to sound the same. You're not going to be using the effects loop. Um, there are a number of amps that you may uh, either download from the rig manager uh, or you may get them on you know, people selling profiles where they're not set up for an effects loop. So you're going to have to make sure that you do this if you want to do it the way I just showed you. This is really super important. So right here on this button right here, this is what I use for the effects loop. And if you press it down, Okay, you'll see a thing here called loop stereo. Now, if you don't know where that is, you can go through here and browse through. 
okay? And you'll see loop mono default, stereo default, depending on how you set your back setup. Since I have my mine in stereo, I'm gonna run the loop setting, okay? So that's how you're gonna to wanna to set that up. Now, the other thing to pay particular uh, good attention to is this volume right here. Um, some of the profiles, and I've noticed this, I have a Vox AC30 that I use. You wanna make sure you have some sort of unity gain so that when you, you can turn this effects loop off and, and hear how it, the volume is and then turn the effects loop on, you may notice a slight drop in the volume of it. So what this volume knob here does is it adjusts that volume and then you wanna go back and forth so that you can match the original signal without the effects loop. So in other words, you'll turn that off play your guitar, turn it on, and see how the volume level is to your liking. And you may need to adjust this one way or the other depending on how this profile was set up. Don't miss this. You really gotta set this up before you uh, use your effects loop. It's really super, super important. So I just use it right here at the beginning. This is, the, this is where my uh, post section is on the Kemper. So I typically will just do the, the first one. You can really use any one of these just because it says mod, delay, reverb, doesn't really matter. You can set up any one of these for the loop uh, the effects loop, uh, depending on how you want to place them. I just happen to like putting them in the beginning here so that we're good in case I wanted to use Kemper's Reaver, which would I have done, um, I, it's still in that loop chain. Just remember too that your effects loop on your uh, pedal board unit is first. So if you wanted to add a reverb or a delay, it's going to follow what you already have in here, okay, based on how I've got this set up. Now, if I wanted to change that, I could take this loop, this effects loop, put it here, and then go here and just, you know, put my reverb. If I wanted the reverb for whatever reason, I don't know why you'd want to do it, before your entire chain on your pedal board, all right? So make sure that you have this configured the way you want to, okay? And of course, the effects has got to be on. If it's not on, then you're kind of going to be out of luck, all right? Don't forget to do that, and obviously, you want to save your settings when you're done. I hope that information helped you out in getting yourself all set up. Maybe there's some tips and tricks that you can use to set your system up. All right, thanks a lot and rock on. And don't forget, click on the chord, chronic chord condition to help you with those chord transitions. Click on the link below. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and click that bell for some more uh, notifications on upcoming videos. And I am going to have more on this Kemper. So thanks a lot and rock on.